my lab is working on mammalian hibernation. We use non-standard animal model, 13-line ground squirrels. This animal is native to Wisconsin, but they occupy a very wide geographical range of North America. They can hibernate up to eight months, and during this time, they don't eat, don't drink, they just hibernate. And we're trying to understand molecular and cellular pathways that these animals employ in order to survive harsh environment. During hibernation, which begins in late summer or early fall, squirrels decrease their metabolism. They drop their heart rate, their breathing rate to just a few a minute and decrease their body temperature to 40 degrees centigrade. Now, this state is called torpor, and it lasts for about two weeks. After that, squirrels enter a new state called interbout arousal, or IBA. During IBA, they warm back up to 37 degrees for just 24 hours, and then go back to torpor again. Now, they repeat this torpor IBA cycle over and over again throughout the entire period of hibernation, until they arouse from it and become active again in spring. The goals of the study are to identify how fundamental physiological processes that are so important for survival are changed and adapted in hibernators to allow hibernation to happen. And specifically for this study, we focused on the fluid homeostasis pathway, or water balance. So fluid homeostasis, to reiterate, is the process of staying hydrated. So um, in order to stay hydrated, we actually have to do a lot of work. And that's because we're always losing water due to urination, breathing, and sweating. We also are always consuming salty foods. And in order to maintain uh, the proper balance of fluids and ions, we need to drink to offset this. Um, fluid homeostasis is really important because if we don't do it, we could uh, end up dehydrated and dehydration is dangerous. Um, and so we have specialized brain regions that are responsible for monitoring our hydration levels. And when they notice even 1% deviation um, of hydration, they'll kind of go into a mode where they tell us that we feel thirsty. And I think we all know that thirst is a very potent drive and it can be very distracting and that's actually good because it tells us that we need to bring our, our fluid levels back to normal. Um, and at the same time, our brains are also telling us to release vasopressin and oxytocin. These are hormones that act on the kidney and tell the kidney it's time to retain water. That way we can actually keep the water that we've just drank um, in order to, to bring our, our levels back to normal. So when you think about humans not drinking for a long time, we get progressively dehydrated and that shows up in our blood and our serum concentration. We get increased serum concentration when we don't drink water. In our squirrels, we were surprised to find that they actually do not show any signs of dehydration. In fact, their serum osmolality or concentration decreases in torpor by as much as 30 milliosmoles uh, per liter. And during IBA, their serum concentration goes back up to active levels, which is about 330. And we thought this was really interesting because it means that without any access to food or water, they are able to internally regulate the composition of their blood. And when we looked at the composition of their blood, we found that during torpor, they deplete their levels of sodium, potassium, lactate, and blood urine and nitrogen. And these major electrolytes and metabolites are what's causing this decrease in serum osmolality. So we wondered whether squirrels feel thirsty during hibernation. And this is a great question, but it's one that we can't ask of the torpid squirrels because they're not active. But we can ask the IBA squirrels. So to do this, we provided IBA squirrels with water, um, which is very unusual because during hibernation, they don't have access to water at all um, for up to eight months. And so we provided them with water and we compared their behavior around the water to that of the active squirrels. And what we found is that these squirrels were indifferent to the water um, and drank much less of it than the active squirrels. So even though at baseline, our squirrels are not as thirsty as their active counterparts, we wondered whether their thirst circuitry or the physiological and neural pathways that regulate thirst are completely shut off or broken during hibernation. And what we found was that by increasing artificially their serum concentration, they can increase their drinking behavior to the levels um, seen in active animals who are treated the same way. So what we think is, although at baseline, the volume of this pathway is turned down, it's still functional and it's 
it can be activated um, during hibernation. Antidiuretic hormones such as vasopressin or oxytocin are released by your posterior pituitary. When you're dehydrated, these hormones act in the kidney to help you retain water so that your urine is not too dilute. And in these squirrels, what we found was that across the summer and hibernation seasons, during torpor, they decreased the level of these hormones to near zero. During these transient active-like IB8 bouts, their hormone levels increased back to active levels. So that says to us these hormones are really important during hibernation, especially during these interbout arousal periods, perhaps to retain water so that they don't urinate too much water. The main conclusions are that we think we have found at least part of the mechanism that helps squirrels to not feel thirsty even though they have been deprived of water for several months. We don't know the entire mechanism, but part of it is that they uh, reversibly sequester serum osmolites. This way they avoid dehydration and don't feel thirsty even though their brain circuit that controls thirst remains functional throughout the entire duration of hibernation. Understanding how these animals can survive without resources such as food and water can potentially help us to employ new therapeutic strategies as well as help people to survive uh, prolonged periods without resources. It also will help us uh, down the road to go for a long space journey and explore new planets. Our hibernation journey would not be possible without support from private foundations, Rita Allen, Arnold Beckman, and Smith Family Foundation, as well as National Institute of Health and National Science Foundation. Thank you. <laughs>